Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's scripture affirmation. Today, we're going to be looking in the book of Exodus chapter 14. We've gone to this chapter before where we've talked about the children of Israel when they were being delivered from uh, the Egyptians, those that had oppressed them, those that had them in bondage and slavery. And the children of Israel were finally released by Pharaoh. And now they are making their way, but they find that the Egyptians are now trailing behind them and the Red Sea is ahead of them. Now they're at the point where they were afraid and they're crying out to Moses. But by the time we get to verse 13, when it says, as Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see them again no more forever. But I want to focus on the next verse, verse 14, which says the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. I want to focus on that one because I know that many of us have been in a battle with the enemy. There have been opposition. There's been uh, trials and tests and storms that we have gone through and the enemy is at work in this nation, in community city, states, and families, generations with our children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, young people. And we know that there is a battle. There is a fight. We're in a spiritual warfare. Not like in the Old Testament. Everything in the Old Testament is basically natural stories that, that we can then apply to our spiritual situation. Because in the Old Testament you see them warring really with enemies that were, you know, other nations and, and fighting with other people. But we have a battle that is a spiritual battle. You see the children of Israel when they're going to a natural promised land. But we are on our way to a spiritual promised land. Eternal life, you know, um, in heaven with God. And then we, you know, so everything is like a natural story in the Old Testament with a spiritual meaning for us, just as Jesus tells parables that are, you know, a natural story with a spiritual meaning. And so when we look in this chapter and we look in this verse, when it talks about the Lord fighting for them and they shall hold their peace, I want us to remember that though we're in a spiritual battle, God has given us spiritual armor, spiritual weapons. He has given us every spiritual gift, everything that we need that we can win the battle, that we're already victorious, that we have already become more than conquerors. And we have to remember that the battle is not ours. As he told the people of God before, the battle is not yours, but it's mine. It's, the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. We have to remember that the fight is not our fight, but we have to be able to show up with the weapons, with the armor, and we have to be able to stand. And that's what we're doing is we're speaking the word of God and praying and praising. We're standing on the word, the firm foundation. We are trusted in God. We are abiding in Christ. We are positioned where we're supposed to be as soldiers on the spiritual battlefield. And so what we have to remember is what he's telling Moses is telling the people, look, you're not going to have to fight. The Lord's going to fight for you and you hold your peace and then this is what we need to remember because when it's telling them about the Lord fighting and for them holding their peace when you look at the same verse of scripture in the amplified it tells us that the the Lord will fight for you and it says you only need to keep silent and remain calm. And this is what I want to point out today is that, listen, I know that a lot of you are in a battle, but we have to remember as the enemy is coming towards us, whether he's coming through other individuals, whether he's coming through a circumstance, a situation, a report that you've gotten, this is what you have to remember is that the Lord will fight for you. But then it also goes on and tells us that we shall hold our peace and remain silent. We need to remain, I'm sorry, keep silent and remain calm. Keep silent and remain calm. Why do I go over and over that? Because a lot of times we nurse and rehearse the problem. We begin to talk about, I can't believe this is happening to me. And all these things are coming at me. And, and you know, I'm not going to be able to handle this. And the enemy, you know, is doing this to my family. And, that, and you know, when I'm going through these trials and I'm getting tired and if one more thing happens and go on and on and begin to get stressed out and anxious and worried. But the Bible tells us not to be anxious for anything, but everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God. And it tells us that we'll have the peace of God that passes understanding to keep our hearts and minds. So 
The Bible tells us not to be anxious. Jesus tells us not to worry about what we're going to eat, drink, or where he tells us. God already knows what we have need of. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Over and over, we see where we're not supposed to be stressed and we're not supposed to be worried and we're not supposed to be anxious, but we are supposed to be calm. We can be silent and remain calm because we know that God is fighting the battle. We know this is a, that this walk is a, is a faith walk. So we walk by faith and not by sight. We can't always see what's happening when it's happening as quickly as it as we want it to happen. But we have to trust him enough that we're not moved and we're not shaken. But we're able to stand still. We're able to keep silent and we're able to remain calm. Look, be calm in the spirit. Know that you have the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You have the word of God that you can speak over your circumstances. You can trust God to move in your situation, to move in your household, to move upon your family members, to, to, to supply your needs, to heal you to strengthen you. Did you know that he is the one fighting for you? If God be for you, who can be against you? You know, you plus God is the majority. So be encouraged today. Don't be fearful. Don't be anxious and don't be stressed out because the Lord will fight for you. All you have to do is submit to him. All you have to do is walk with him in humble submission to his word. Do what God tells you to do and God will fight the battle for you. All you have to do is walk in obedience. And this is what we're called to do. It's the whole duty of man is to fear God and to obey him. And and so I encourage you today, don't be anxious, don't be worried, don't be stressed, but instead remain silent and remain calm. Keep silent and remain calm. Keep silent and remain calm. The words that you speak ought to be words of faith, words of hope, that you speak the words that God has said over your situation, over your children, over your spouse, over your household, over your finances, over your health, over your job, over your ministry, over your, you know, your business transactions, everything that concerns you, God will perfect it if you surrender to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are listening those that hear this word today. I pray, Father, that whatever they may be facing or going through, Father, that you remove any fear, anxiety, or stress. But, Father, that you give them a peace that passes understanding, a perfect peace as their mind is stayed on you and they trust you. I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that they are able to keep silent and remain calm, knowing that you are fighting the battle for them, that they are already um, winners and overcomers, that they are more than conquerors through him that love them. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for making a way out of no way. I thank you for the supernatural. I thank you for for the miracles unfolding. I thank you for the needs being met, the doors being opened, the favor being given. God, we know that, Father, our trust, hope, and confidence is in you. Every good and every perfect gift is from you, from the Father of lights, from above. And we give you all the praise and glory and honor, Father, for looking over your word to perform it, for being God, the creator and sustainer, for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We honor you today. We worship you. We thank you, God, for all that you've done and all that you're doing and all that you're about to do in the mighty, matchless, powerful name of Jesus, we pray and we say hallelujah and amen. Join us every day, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're up, if you're up, call the number underneath this YouTube video or go and log into your Facebook and go on my page, Tony Brooke Brown. We are going before the Lord every day. We go seven days a week, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, prayer and word. You can start your day in the presence of the Lord with other believers as though we're touching. We're in agreement with one another. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't so you get uploads, uh, updates when I upload any videos, any messages, and we have a message Monday through Friday for sure, but then there's additional messages that may be uploaded from time to time or on Sunday messages, and so I encourage you today to get this word in you. Listen, be excited, and know that God is on your side. As long as you are walking in his word, you have the greater one on the inside. You got God on your side. You got the word that you can speak. You can speak the name of Jesus. <clears throat> You've been empowered and you've been enabled. You are victorious. So be encouraged today and just keep silent and remain calm. And when you speak, let it be God's word that you're speaking. Let it be words of faith, words of hope, words of love. And so I encourage you today to go and witness to somebody, tell somebody about Jesus, share this video with somebody who needs to be encouraged today. And remember that God is on their side. And I just encourage you today, be beneficial for the kingdom, be a vessel and an instrument in God's hands today. And in everything. Make sure that you are bringing glory to his name. You're here for his good pleasure. Have a blessed day in the Lord, and I'll see you next time. God bless you.